Online. News first, face to face with Charlotte Benedict. Party and then um, people break off from the opposition and come in, but none of them have really succeeded. Uh, to discuss these matters and much more that is definitely happening here in the political arena in Sri Lanka, we've got with us today Samagijana Balavege, parliamentarian, Harshana Rajakaruna. Uh, a very good evening, Mr. Rajakaruna, and welcome to the show. Thank you, and have a good evening. So, starting off first, now there have been, um, well, many things that are happening in the political arena here in Sri Lanka, giving, uh, given the fact that we are leading up to a presidential election. Um, one thing that has always dominated the headlines in Sri Lanka, especially when it comes close to an election, is this discussion on corruption. Now, speaking on corruption, um, recently there was a judgment from the Supreme Court that held that certain decisions that were taken by um, the higher-ups in government uh, were identified as the responsible, uh, or they were identified as those responsible uh, for the economic crisis, that they contributed uh, in a certain way and they had violated the rights of the general public uh, by doing so. So this raises the question of accountability, corruption. They're all very intertwined. believe that the Samagijana Balavegya is not going to really deliver on these promises. on anti-corruption. So good evening and thank you for having me. Uh, so if I may start this conversation by asking you, uh, why did we form SJB? Hmm. You know, we were all part of the UMP in 2015 hmm. government, the Yahapalne government. Yes. So Yahapalne government came into power hmm. by one of the main objectives hmm. or one of the main uh, objective what people wanted mm. was to uh, uh, make sure that we uh, curtail corruption. corruption. Mm. Unfortunately, though how much we fought within, mm. within the party, within the government, mm. we knew that it's not going to ever happen mm. because we saw in that 2015 UMP government, mm. there were behind the scene some sort of deals happening. Mm. So that was the reason that we broke away from the UMP. You have to understand mm. that. Mm. The whole point of us, probably not only me, most of my colleagues, probably the hardest decision mm. they have ever made in their lives. Certainly for me, it was mm. one of the hardest decisions. So we broke away from the SJB purely because one of the main reasons would be that. I wouldn't mm. say that's the only reason. Mm. The whole country was asking for a change of leadership in the UMP. Mm. So that was also a reason. But one of the main reasons were that, you know, we didn't expect, we didn't get what we expected mm. when it comes to curtailing corruption. Mm. So, SJP, uh, the start of the birth of the SJP, I, I, the objective of that is uh, uh, that we need to put a full stop, mm. curtail corruption. Mm. So, that is our aim and I believe we can have all sorts of independent commissions, we can have all sorts of new uh, uh, amendments to the law mm. or new laws. But unless there is political will, mm. absolutely there won't be uh, what, we were, what we are looking for. So speaking of this political will, you know, there's absolutely no point as the saying goes, you know, to close the stable doors after the horse is bolted. Now, l let's speak about the formation of the SJB. Now, the SJB began right after uh, 
I believe, uh, former presidential candidate uh, Sajid Premadasa contested the election and uh, did not win the ticket, lost to Gotabe Rajapaksa. He contested under the UNP ticket. So, if I may ask you, at which point of time during the 2015 Yahapalane government did it become evident to you and your colleagues that the government is really not doing what they say and to put it in your own words, having a lot of behind the door, behi behind closed door deals? So, I mean, we were newcomers uh, uh, in 2015, mm. right? So we, we were all pushing for it. We, we had that, uh, we, we had that enthusiasm. Mm. And uh, uh, so we were all pushing for it. But uh, we, we always thought that it's a matter of time mm. that it'll, it'll happen. So because that was the, the idea that was given mm. by the leaders mm. that... Uh, uh, it's coming. It's coming. You know, Much like uh, Sri Lanka becoming a developed nation uh, for the longest time, now I think the expectation is uh, 2048, so it's coming. It's coming. So, but when we knew in the last year that mm. it, it is never going to happen. Okay. And uh, so that was the main reason that we were having discussions internally mm. that mm. we need to change the leadership. Mm. So, we were not planning to change a uh, break away from the SJP. Mm. We wanted to change the leadership of the mm. UNP. Mm. And... Uh, Unfortunately, in the very last minute, uh, uh, Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe didn't allow that to happen, and mm. we had no choice uh, than uh, breaking, away. breaking away. But I have to say this: I have to say this by looking back mm. three and a half years mm. of what we have done, mm. and what has happened to the UMP, mm. and what has happened to the SJB. Mm. I have to say that I believe mm. that we made the right choice mm. and I'm very happy that uh, uh, I, 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 we formed this new group mm. uh, otherwise we would be also saying singing happy birthday uh, to uh, my, my president Mahindra Rajapaksa's birthday I mean how could you I mean my, my point I have nothing personally uh, uh, issue uh, that she's, he's celebrating his birthday or mm. somebody wishing but the whole point it's beyond that you know, it's not like you saying happy birthday mm. it's just that he, he, uh, the, the leader of the UMP the current president mm. is protecting them protecting the Rajapaksas mm. protecting the SLPP mm. and, and he's, he's the ga uh, main warrior uh, protecting all of them so uh, so I, I am happy that I've broken away mm. with with a uh, with a with 90 percent 95 percent of the UMPs mm. uh, or even more mm. and and we can you know uh, be confident mm. that uh, we don't have any deals mm. or behind uh, the scene discussions mm. uh, with, with the SL, SLPP Hmm. So, as far as the aspirations of the people go, one thing... If I may add yes. one more thing, and, and this is right after the Supreme Court, Supreme Court verdict. Hmm. This is right after. Just on the same day. On the same day, was it? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, or, 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 or one day. Or one, one day. Later. I think it yes. was like within 48 hours. Hmm. So, so, I mean, I believe that, you know, they, sh they should resign from parliament. Hmm. Right? And, and Gota Bay Rajapaksa's, uh, you know, expenses are covered by the uh, people. The people. The so taxpayers. The taxpayers. So, so I mean, we should stop these things. Hmm. Ajit Nivar Kabral must be still getting his pension. Hmm. So, these things should be stopped. Hmm. So, that is the reason that we, the SJB, has started a, pet a petition. Hmm. to to uh, uh, get rid of their civic rights hmm. and if not we are hoping to uh, uh, get some sort of compensation hmm. uh, through another um, court case hmm. so we are we are talking about that and we have getting legal consultation hmm. and we strongly believe that in that hmm. so speaking about um, accountability and, and what I was saying was really the aspiration of the people when you go out there and you talk to the people especially when we go on uh, the gum at the movement so on and so forth uh, people have lost faith in Sri Lanka's economy uh, the middle class might be having some sort of uh, hope at least for the future because without hope what are we but there is 
a section of this society that is hopeless. They know uh, that there is no way out, or at least they think that there is no way out of this misery that they are going through because they were suffering. They were suffering back in 2018, 2019. They were suffering, but now life for them is just unimaginable. It's endless torment. And for these people, for these people, uh, which is a majority of Sri Lanka, given the fact that uh, quite a sizable percentage of Sri Lankans are now living below the poverty line, for these Sri Lankans who are the worst affected by this economic crisis, their main aspiration and goal is to hold the people, the leaders who led this country into this economic crisis to account. They do not want them to be getting a slap on the wrist and continuing to live on their lives after they have earned for generations and generations to come. Now, do you believe that the SJB has such a strong political will to go after these people who are responsible, everybody who are responsible, even as, as, as recent as uh, the immunoglobulin scam, where people died, where there was medicine brought and people lost their sight? Do you think that there is that much of political will on the I, side of the SJB? I 100% I uh, believe so. Uh, I think uh, our leader, uh, the opposition leader, Sajid Premadasa, has that political will. Hmm. And he, the team he has also believes in that. Hmm. And um, so that is, the re that is the reason we formed the SJP. Hmm. One of the main reasons that hmm. we formed the SJP. And that is, a re that is a reason, if you look at uh, how we have behaved, hmm in the last three and a half years. Mm. So we have always stuck to these policies. Mm. We have not had any mm. uh, dealings, underhand dealings, or you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Mm. You know, we have always been uh, very uh, uh, thorough mm. in, in what we have been saying. Yes, we have that political will. We will make sure that uh, uh, we get the international support on this. Hmm. For example, even now we uh, uh, have approached the United Nations hmm. we, uh, asset specially, recovery. especially on this program called STARS, hmm. Stolen Asset Recovery Program. So for all that you need uh, the government to approach. Hmm. So we, we have studied these programs, we, mm. we, will, we will get that support, not only international support, we have the independent commissions, we have the bribery commissions, mm. but all these things mm. would be activated and we will be able to get 100% out of those institutions mm. only if you have that political will. Mm. For example, the, uh, if, if when the uh, election Commission gave two dates mm. for the local council election. The executive, the president, mm. clearly was not helping the uh, election commission, commission mm. to go ahead with the election. Mm. So, I mean, there's no point in how good the uh, members are, mm. how, how, how good their decisions are, mm. if that political will is not there. Mm. So, that's a clear example. Not only that, I mean, even the judiciary, hmm. even the judiciary, hmm. right? So, uh, the political will is very important and I believe uh, SJB and uh, SJB leader Sajib Prem Das has that political will. Well, now, the SJB or, or members of the SJB have been in power before. They've held positions of government and uh, to the eyes of the general public, at least, a strong contender with the SJB in this fight against corruption, a fight against the reason why all of us are here economically, uh, socially, financially, why we are here today um, is the Jatika Janabala Vegya, out of all the political parties in Sri Lanka. And there are those who believe that the JJB has never been in a proper position of power. I believe under Chandrika Bandar and Kumarutunga, they held several ministerial portfolios. However, um, within the span of a year, or maybe even less than that, they resigned from those ministerial portfolios uh, due to a breakdown, of course, uh, with the relationship between the two parties. Uh, so they've never really gotten a chance or a go at trying to get rid of corruption in Sri Lanka. There are those who believe that members of the SJB have had their chance. 
several chancellors, in fact, maybe not uh, newcomers like yourself, but uh, more senior members, of course, who are who will most probably be in a higher position of power, a higher position of government, having a bigger say under an SJB government. So there are those who believe that the JJB would probably be better at it and we should probably give them a shot too. What do you have to say to these people? I don't think this JJB, I don't believe in that. Because what is JJB? There's no JJB, that's JVP. Hmm. J, JJB is a camouflage. Hmm. Because they have a, such a bad reputation, hmm. JVP, they want to camouflage by putting a couple of other people and they have this new name called JGP. Hmm. So that, so, but the uh, decision makers are hmm. the JV, JVPs and the JVP policy will uh, uh, be there. Hmm. So first of all, when you said that they never got the chance, no, they always had the chance. Hmm. From when? 1994. Okay. Right? Mm. They were in government. Mm. Then who brought Mahindra Rajapaksa? Mm. Chandrika Kumar Tunga didn't want uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa to win. Mm. It was, it's, it's, a, it's no secret. Mm. It was J JVP mm. and, and I, I, ca I can show you the video clips mm. how, how much they talk about in parliament how strong and how hard they work to bring Mahindra Rajapaksa. Mm. So now Mahindra Rajapaksa has been uh, uh, you know you know now the courts have made made him and his brothers mm. uh, they have uh, made a judgment saying that they have uh, bankrupt this country mm. so and um, they also uh, a part of uh, you know shouldn't they be blamed mm. so not only that e even even when it came to other presidential elections mm. like Maitri Parasiri said mm. all, all that they were directly and indirectly helping uh, even Maitri Parasiri said mm. so but didn't the didn't the SJB feel Maitri I mean the the UNP your your mother party your no, initial no, no. party what? didn't they feel Maitri Parasiri said no no my, my point is mm. you mm. were saying that JJB didn't get JV, an opportunity JVB didn't get an opportunity no mm. I, I disagree with that they were directly and indirectly in uh, uh, in government as well as making uh, leaders hmm. in this country and they they played a bigger big role hmm. so you can't just say that oh, I'm now all born again and and I have not done any sin before hmm. right so definitely hmm. they are part of it and we so maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe maybe someone could say well Indirectly, yes, they have been part of Sri Lanka's no, political structure. Directly, how, how can so you say directly? indirectly when they directly how many been in power? Directly, been yes. In power. They, how many ministries did they have, uh, uh, and how many uh, parliamentarians did they have? Almost forty parliamentarians they had during uh, Chandrika Kumar Tunga's government. Hmm. So they had cabinet ministries, they had deputy ministries, hmm. so on. So, but, but, so is, but is is the, is the SJB of the opinion like when did the economic crisis start now there are various opinions the people who are in government right now the SLPP says that you know this is bad policy since the day of independence uh, they they also say that uh, we are in this economic crisis because of the JVP riots that happened in the so 80s all and I'm, the 70s. all I'm saying if they say that they this was due to like say three decades or whatever mm -hmm. J JVP is also responsible for that, mm. not only uh, uh, everyone else other than them. Okay, right. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Mm. But the, now the gov now it and we I have to say now if somebody believes in uh, JVP, mm. led alliance or whatever, mm. that they will uh, lead this country to another level. You have to understand simple fact. Tell me a single country in this in in this world mm. that has this policy, mm. the policy they are talking about. If Sri Lanka, you're referring to socialism, absolutely. But they are no longer hardline. They socialists. don't know where they are. <laughs> if they are not mm. socialist, mm. you look at last year's May Day rally. Mm. Before Rohan J Veera's picture mm. portrait. They had Karl Marx, they had Lenin's. Hmm. So Karl Marx, Lenin hmm. is a capital, are uh, the capitalists, hmm. right? 
I mean, who, who's fooling whom? Hmm. Definitely, they are socialist. And uh, what uh, you think, international community will s support a socialist government? Hmm. You think IMF will? Hmm. Right. So people, I, 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 I want to make clearly uh, give this message to the public that you know it'll be go to part two. Hmm. It'll be go to part two. So you have to. Sometimes people must be might be angry, but you can't make the wrong choice again. We don't have the time to experiment, hmm. right? This is not the time to experiment. Hmm. No trial and error. Hmm. So, uh, so uh, I mean, you can't say ah, it's just only five years now. Hmm. No way. We can't. We we, we can't. We, we can't experiment. Hmm. So, uh, if Sri Lankans want. This country to be a North Korea, vote for JVP led alliance, hmm. right? So, uh, I mean, I don't think, uh, I don't think even if you look at the pa past few months, hmm. you know, they have they have not uh, when it comes to corruption, you know, they have always uh, not come to the forefront. They have not come to. The they forefront. have not come to the forefront. Are you it, sure? it was the SJB. Hmm. It was the SJB that uh, SJB that uh, went to courts. Hmm. It was uh, our legal head, uh, SJB legal head, Mr. Upul Jai Surya. It was uh, our working committee members who uh, uh, put the court case, hmm. not the uh, JVP. Hmm. No, they didn't do that. So it was the SJB. Uh, who, which, which uh, went to the courts, got, got this verdict, and we will make sure mm. we, uh, we, we will make sure that we do beyond this, mm. beyond this verdict. Mm. We are trying our level best. So mm. SGP will lead that. So you you were saying that under a JJP government, the possible future for Sri Lanka is grim. It's as grim as becoming another North Korea. Um, well, we saw that under an SLPP government, we were almost heading towards a North Korea in the sense that we had to stand in line for fuel, we had to stand in line for gas, um, we had to stand in line for food, we uh, didn't have medicine. Uh, we were sinking as a country under the SLPP. Um, and of course, during the time of the Yahapalne government, the central bank bond scam took place. People's pension funds have been uh, affected by the bond scam and now by the economic crisis. So what do you have to say to those who argue saying, well, the SLPP is capitalist, the UNP was capitalist, and both of those governments almost led Sri Lanka to a North Korea. But now you're saying that a JGB government would definitely lead Sri Lanka to a North Korea. H how do you balance those two well, arguments? I have to say during the Yahapalane between 2015 to 2019, mm. Things were not. You can't even compare that to what happened in 2020. Definitely, right? You can't even compare. If you look at it, hmm. uh, we, we, what we have done, hmm. we, we, uh, we we have done a lot to the society, hmm. uh, and also even the cost of living, things hmm. like that. We had done far better hmm. than 2015. Uh, 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 you know, in 2019, we did better than 2015. Hmm. So, so we we had done better. The bond scam was a disaster, hmm. right? And uh, but at least that amount of hmm. eleven billion or so hmm. wa was uh, uh, frozen. Frozen. Hmm. So, so you can't say that uh, you know um, nothing was done. Nothing was done. So we, I, we have to say that. Hmm. Uh, un unfortunately, it the main reason for this. Uh, bankruptcy was mm. the decision when Gotabe Rajapaksa decided to uh, give tax uh, leave. That was the first. Mm. F that was the first instance mm. where we, uh, where he gave tax cuts mm. for about six hundred billion rupees. Mm. Mm. So we had lost six hundred billion rupees mm. into two years. Mm. Then uh, the dollar was. You know, fixed at two hundred and three rupees, mm, mm. 
and so there the were many decisions that led to the so those crisis. were the those were the main decisions. M Mr. Rajkarna, we have time for just one last question in the final few minutes of the program. So Sri Lanka has been seeing many governments, as I said at the beginning. Uh, there have been single party governments, there have been uh, two party governments, there have been broad coalitions, and none of them seems to have really worked in Sri Lanka. Now uh, we have a form of a coalition. I don't know what we can really call it. But um, moving forward, the SJB, what's the plan like? Is it a single party government? Is it a coalition? Now, speaking of the JJB and the SJB and, and how people are you know, looking at an alternative other than the current, uh, or current well, people in power, um, is there also talks of an alliance between the two? What kind of uh, future so, are, you, are you looking at? Now, the government, government is like, it, <laughs> it's like a raped government. Hmm. Right, you know, it's unfortunately, <coughs> uh, it's a government without a mandate. Mm. It's a president without a mandate. Mm. It's a president who couldn't win the parliamentary seat, mm. who had come in parliament, come to the parliament through the nationalist, mm. and he was backed by his opposition mm. to be the president. So mm. it's it's completely confused. Uh, mm. Uh, s s um, parliament and a head of state. Mm. So what, what I proposed, what the SJB is proposing is today. Actually, it's a it's a personal uh, proposal that I gave today. Mm. Uh, I we I believe that we need a fresh mandate. Mm. We need a, a fresh mandate and and a new parliament mm. and a new head of the state. Mm. For that, the best thing that we can do is mm. have a election. Mm. I propose that we should have the presidential election and the parliamentary election on the same very day. Together. Together. So we the can have can clearly two, choose. Yeah, we can have two ballot papers. Mm. It will save billions of rupees. Mm. It will save billions of rupees. Mm. And also it will save time, money, <coughs> both. Mm. And it it's an ideal uh, way of getting mm. a fresh uh, leader mm. for the country with mm. a fresh mandate and a parliament with a fresh mandate. And, uh, and, and a clear future for Sri Lanka because people will be able to properly decide at one point of time where is Sri Lanka going to go? Who are we going to love to lead Sri Lanka into this future that we all pray and that we all hope for and that we all want. Thank you very much, uh, Parliamentarian Raja Harshan Raj Karuna from the Samagijana Balavegi for joining us on our program today. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in for another episode of Face to Face. Until we meet again, and God bless.